Tips for snagging introverts and extroverts while virtual networking. In recent years, virtual networking has become all the rage. More and more events are being held online. This means that you can attend an event that is all the way across the country and even on the other side of the world without ever leaving your home or office. But it's not always easy to get everyone to be engaged. When attendees engage with the event, they are more likely to enjoy the experience, which means that you will be successful. However, online engagement is a term with many different meanings. In this presentation, we will explain some tips for snagging introverts and extroverts while virtual networking. How to engage introvert attendees. Virtual events work quite well for introverts, especially if there is a lot of communication prior to the event regarding the content. In fact, the more you work on this, the more interest you'll get. Don't use headlines that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. Make sure to provide plenty of details so that you alleviate any anxiety. Be clear about participation and how their participation will add value. Encourage attendees to be involved prior to the event, which is something that can be done at their own pace. Give them time to reflect on the content. They may like to have a chance to read more about the topic at hand and look over any speaker profiles ahead of time. Send out the agenda ahead of time and keep attendees informed of any changes so that they can be in control of their experience. Keep the following list of introvert traits in mind when designing your virtual event. They enjoy stroke prefer solitude. They prefer not to be the centre of attention. They enjoy close one-on-one -on -one relationships. They think before speaking. They need time alone to recharge or reflect. They prefer quiet, independent environments. They focus deeply and they're seen as reserved. How to engage extroverted attendees. Of course, virtual events also work well for extroverts. Many times, event planners are attempting to replicate in-person events online, which are biased towards extroverts anyway. However, even with the bias of creating events for extroverts, there are some things that you need to keep in mind for virtual events. Extroverts can become frustrated because they're not as able to be involved as they are with in-person events. Extroverts enjoy mixing and mingling and vocalising much more than introverts, so you must find ways that they can network with other attendees. You must design your virtual event in such a way that it allows extroverts the participation they seek. Keep the following list of extrovert traits in mind when designing your virtual event. They have large social networks. They prefer attention. They think out loud. They make decisions quickly. They gain energy from others. They're outgoing, enthusiastic, and they do well in team-oriented open work settings. Conclusion You may not realise it, but you have an unconscious bias. In fact, everyone in the world does. It's about how we see the world. Events are typically designed for extroverts because there's lots of networking, group activities and a stimulating environment. However, by designing events this way, we automatically leave out about half of the attendees. In most cases, people are not aware of their unconscious bias, but it's there. This means that when you're planning your event, you must recognise that you're likely using your unconscious bias to make your decisions. Therefore, take some time to consider the audience data and determine what you want your outcome to be. If the two align, great. If not, you need to take a closer look to ensure that your unconscious bias isn't in control. Don't forget that you need to make sure that your host and speakers are aware of what it is that you expect from your event. They have their own bias, which has an effect on how they design and run their sessions. Pay attention to your audience, as it can impact your attendance and engagement stats.